In this video, I'm going to show you some Seek tools that make batch cycle time analysis easy and straightforward using an example use case. In this analysis, we have a process engineer tasked with performing cycle time analysis on a batch process, identifying phases of the process, including time spent pumping material into a reactor, heating up the reactor, adding catalyst, and pumping material out of the reactor, as well as downtime during the batch and turnaround time between batches. The engineer's objective is to quantify the durations of each phase, as well as the monetary losses associated with downtime in order to understand possible cost savings associated with each batch. Let's jump into their analysis. The first step is to load the data used by the engineer, which includes our catalyst feed rate, reactor fill level, and reactor temperature. You can see here that we are working with reactor one for the manufacturing site. We will set our time range at about four and a half hours and navigate to view one complete batch. We want to identify periods when a batch is occurring, indicated by a reactor level above 0.5%. We can do this using Seek's point and click value search tool. For these batch conditions, we want to easily identify which product is being manufactured. To do this, we can add in our product code signal. This is a string signal providing a product code identifier. We can assign this code as a property to each batch using Seek's formula tool. Here, we are providing the inputs to our formula including the maximum duration, the name of our property, in this case, product code, the signal to pull our product code from, and we are telling Seek to pull the product code value at the start of each batch. From here, we can add appropriate labels to our display, including labeling our new coded batch condition with the product code. Next, we want to identify our phases during our batch. We will start with when material is being pumped into our reactor. To do this, we can look at our batch reactor level signal. This signal is a bit too noisy for the purposes of our analysis, so we can smooth it using Seek's point and click signal smoothing tool, which allows for a variety of algorithms and smoothing windows. To identify periods of increasing fill level, which indicate material addition, we can take the derivative of our smooth level signal using Seek's formula tool. Once we have this derivative, we want to identify periods when this derivative is positive, indicating a positive rate of change of material into our reactor. We can do this using the value search tool. You can see that this will assign a new condition, which we have called pump in, to our display pane. This same analysis can be applied to find when material is being pumped out of the reactor. To do this step a bit quicker without repeating our entire analysis, we can just click on the eye icon next to pump in and duplicate the condition. We can then adjust our is greater than to is less than to find times when our reactor level derivative is negative, which indicates a decrease in reactor fill level, or material being pumped out of the reactor. Next, we want to identify when catalyst is being added to the reactor. Using our catalyst feed rate signal, we can find when our feed rate is greater than zero using our value search tool. Next, we want to identify when we are heating up our reactor. To do this, we can look at our batch reactor temperature signal and identify positive rates of change. Again, this signal is a bit too noisy for us to analyze, so before we go any further, we can smooth our signal using the signal smoothing tool. We will take the derivative of this signal using our formula tool, and then we will identify periods of increasing temperature using our value search. Our heat up condition for this process is defined by when the reactor temperature is increasing but no catalyst is being added. To find this condition, we can use the point and click composite condition tool. Next, we want to identify downtime and equipment turnaround time. Downtime is defined as a period during the batches when none of our process steps are occurring, so material is not being pumped in or out, catalyst is not being added, and our reactor is not heating. To find this, we can use the formula tool and subtract all of our identified phases from our batch. We can find our turnaround time or time between batches by using the formula tool and finding the inverse of our batch condition. And here we will ignore outages over six hours, which for our process indicate a planned plant shutdown. Finally, now that we have our batch phases clearly defined, we can explore different visualization options. First, we can look at all of our batches in chain view, which aligns all batches across our duration of interest side by side for quick comparison. 
Using six asset groups, I can apply this analysis to another reactor at my plant just by clicking the Swap Asset button. Now you can see that we are viewing the same analysis for reactor two. If we want to look at all of our batches overlaid and normalized to start at the same time, we can use Capsule View. Using Seek's grouping feature, we can also group our signals by phase of the process. If we want to quantify our total batch cycle times, we can use Seek's Signal from Condition tool to look at that total duration. This analysis can also be applied to specific phases of production within the batch as needed. If we want to summarize our production phase durations across both reactors, we can do this by creating scorecard metrics for each production phase. Here, for our pump-in scorecard metric, we are calculating a condition-based metric around our pump-in condition, quantifying our total duration across our batch. We have entered in time thresholds to provide a visual indication for when our pump-in time has exceeded a set of limits. We have a variety of threshold limits available, as well as the option to customize colors depending on our needs. Once we've created this metric for all of our batch phases, we can view durations across both assets by clicking the Asset button. Next, we can use Seek's Periodic Condition tool to create a daily condition, which we can use in a scorecard metric to quantify number of batches per day. Using the formula tool, we can create a signal to quantify our total downtime by aggregating our downtime durations across each day. This signal can be used in a scorecard metric to summarize our total daily downtime in table view. Finally, using formula, we can create a signal for the cost of downtime by multiplying our downtime signal by the known financial loss and incorporating this in a final scorecard metric. We can clean up our table and adjust significant figures to have a final summary view we can share across our team or with management. From this use case, you can see that Seek has a variety of tools to accelerate your batch process insights. For additional helpful resources, check out seek.org.